Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Papa's Workshop. These are for Adam, Brady, Luke, and Brenna. Uh, before we get started today, of course, we got to check with my assistant, but she's over here sleeping. Uh, so let's we're gonna go wake her up. Molly, she's hanging hanging out here on the floor. Say hi to everybody, Molly girl. Yeah, no food. No food. Yes, that's my good girl. You kind of wore out, aren't you? Yeah. All right, let's get to work. All right. Today we're going to talk about something that, uh, a tool that everybody has, and you guys have it in your toolboxes, uh, as probably the most misused tool uh, in the toolbox. We're going to talk about screwdrivers. Plain old screwdriver, uh, except that it isn't that simple. There are thousands of kinds of screws and different screwdrivers to go with them. Uh, uh, this makes a great pry bar, but that's really not what it's for. Uh, of course, the most common sc screw you'll see is the slotted. Well, that's probably not true as much anymore. It was the first screw. Uh, Screws were, have been around for centuries. Uh, the first ones in, for woodworking were made by hand, uh, so they weren't, uh, weren't used a lot, only when it was necessary. Uh, they used nails quite a bit, which we'll talk about in another episode. Uh, but they were always the slotted, and by the slotted I mean it's got the, got the round or got the slot on this this round head. This is a wood screw. This is called a round head because it has a round top, and it's a wood screw because it has a, a shank and a tapered thread. Um, so that slot, you know, it's easy for the screwdriver to slip out. But but we have all these different screwdrivers, and you have to find the screwdriver that fits that slot appropriately. This big screwdriver actually fits. This is a number 14 screw. Uh, the screws and the screwdrivers have numbering systems. Uh, the smaller the number, the smaller the screw. So this little guy here, I don't know if you can see that in there. See that little screw? That little bitty screw, that's a number one screw. Uh, and this would be a number 10. See, it's still, and a number eight. Eights and tens are probably more common uh, sizes. And then the screwdrivers are numbered. Uh, uh, a number zero screwdriver is very small. Uh, and a number one is a little bit bigger. I think this is more like a number one tip. And then this would be a number two. And then the big one's a number three. But all the screwdrivers have the same kind of a numbering system in the drivers and in the screws. Uh, so it wasn't until about... Uh, the screws became much more prevalent in the 1800s where they, they started coming up with ways to manufacture them in the late 1700s uh, but they were still just the slotted kind it wasn't until uh, 1930 uh, that the Phillips screwdrivers came uh, came to be and the Phillips is uh, one one way you can look at them I've heard is plus and minus this is the slotted is a minus and the Phillips is a plus. Uh, uh, but those all, that started about 1930. Uh, and there are, this is a, probably a misused uh, tool as well, because there are several different kinds of, of plus screws, shall we say. There's, there's Phillips, uh, there's Fearson, there's Posi Drive. Uh, they're all little variations on that, what looks like a plus. Uh, what we'll see, what you'll see mostly today is the Phillips uh, in the U.S. And in Europe, the Posi Drive has become the more popular. So a lot of a European hardware like hinges 
and latches and stuff like that if it comes from Europe will have the posi drive and it's very hard to this is a posi drive screwdriver here it's very hard to see the difference um, but it will have a symbol like that on it uh, whereas the Phillips just has the plus uh, the differences are the Phillips <coughs> They're all kind of the, the plus, right? So this is a very large version of it. Uh, but the Phillips, these are rounded in here. Uh, and on the screwdriver itself, these are actually kind of tapered. Not quite that much, but they are tapered a little bit. Uh, and the result is that they can cam out and cam out means that you're you're putting pressure on the screw and the screwdriver slips comes out of the slot uh, on the on the slotted screwdrivers you end up you know you've got your slot and you end up tearing the tearing it out because you've cammed out uh, and that can happen on the Phillips there's, you can only put so much torque on a Phillips and it, it will just almost automatically cam out. Well, they, they, uh, in Europe, they came up with in the 60s uh, the Posi Drive, and it has, they're, they're, they're more square, and it has another little deal here in this, at these points. And that's why you'll see the screws. Uh, if this is a screw head, they'll be marked with the little slots like that. That's a posi, posi drive screw. And it needs to have, I mean, a Phillips screwdriver will work on it, but again, you won't be able to put all very much torque on it. Uh, but if you use a posi drive screwdriver and a posi drive screw, you can get a lot of torque on the screw. Um, so, like I said, that's that's seeing more of this because it's very popular in Europe because it it does uh, get you a tighter tighter screw uh, and those that's that came in the 60s but there's other variations like I said that Pearson which you don't see much is kind of like the Phillips here except that those it's a little thinner and it's got square corners in there and it's very narrow so it's more like this and, and that one, you've got to have a screwdriver to be able to, to get that right. But you don't see that very much. There's a lot of special purpose screws, uh, especially security screws that have all sorts of fancy things on them, uh, but, but you won't run into that very much. Uh, screws that I like to use have a, what they call a Robertson. Uh, so that's the screw, it's got a square. And again, just like the slotted and the Phillips, it comes in the, the various screw sizes. Like I said, these this one I showed before was a number 10. And see, and it has a, and then the screwdrivers for it. Uh, this is a number two Robertson, and it goes down to all the different sizes. This is a zero, so the, the different sizes of this square. Uh, and that, Robertson was actually before the Phillips. It, it was in the early 1900s uh, when that was first uh, made. Uh, the other things you'll see today, uh, a lot of the deck screws, this would be a number, this is a number nine deck screw, and it has that torx shape. And that's kind of like a, So you connect all those dots. And that, again, you go from zero to whatever size. Um, uh, <coughs> these are actually kind of, they go like, uh, I think it's like 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 is the how they're uh, numbered. But again, the, the smaller the number, the smaller the size. And, uh, and those screwdrivers, so that's, this would be, this is a 
This is called a T30. So these Torex ones would all be labeled. That's the T10 or the T15, all the way, and they go higher and lower. On the Posi drive, you'll see a lot of time that'll be labeled as PZ and then have a number. Uh, so let's see, that's, uh, you know, like screws come in all sorts of sizes, right? The screwdrivers, you've got the short ones and little ones. And then, of course, you've got the, uh, uh, the magnetic bits. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about the types of screw heads. Uh, I showed you before was the round head because it's got this round top, but you can have a uh, what they call a pan head. It's more it's more of a flat deal, so that it would be a pan head. Uh, if I got a pan, nope. uh, and what they call a truss head is kind of a flat. A flat circle that's a truss head and that would look like this one if we can see that in there um, there's also the uh, there's a kind of a dome head which is somewhere between these between the uh, the truss or between the pan and the round head it's kind of in between those two and then of course you've got the where you see a lot of countersunk wood screws or a flat head, right? That's flat. But you can also have that same kind of screw like this. That's called an oval head. Uh, so that's made to, sh to sh but it's set in the wood. It's made to show a little bit, whereas this one's going to be flush. Uh, See, so that pretty well takes care of the screw heads, but then you've got the difference between you got machine screws. Uh, a screw, by definition, is goes into uh, into wood. It's or self tapping, so that the threads are usually tapered and starts in a a bolt has threads like this. Right, so it's used to attach, excuse, with a nut, or it's it's machined into a you know screwed into another panel. But they, so they can have the same kind of heads on them, but that's a bolt, whereas this is a screw, not an ice cream cone. Uh, so you, you got those differences, and then uh, you'll see a lot of wood screws. Uh, 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 most wood screws have that that straight shank, but you can have screws that have threads the whole way, all the way to the top. And there, that's more of a modern screw. A traditional wood screw would have that area of the shank, and the reason for that is to when you're when you're screwing a board two boards together, uh, if you have the right screw. And you've got the straight shank, and then you got the the screws that will pull that other board down. It'll pull the two boards together. Whereas if you have threads the whole way, <coughs> then then it's gonna. However, the tight they were to begin with, they're gonna stay that way. It, it can't pull that second one down unless you drill out a hole bigger than the threads in that top piece. That's kind of why that's there. Uh, and then you have what they call self-tapping screws that you see a lot today. Um, yeah, if we can see. I just got a little, a little one. I can't hardly see it on that, but it'll have the the threads, but then a part of the thread will be cut out at the tip and that is to cut the fibers and that would be a self-tapping screw that you theoretically don't have to drill a hole uh, a lead hole uh, prior to it um, and like I said the screws have the, the sizes and uh, you can get one of these little deals that will help you get the size so this 
won't fit in this hole, but it fits in that. This one here, that's a number 10. And usually you'll see the, the common sizes are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Uh, and then you get into the 12, and then like 14 is almost like a quarter of an inch. But you can, you will run into the odd sizes, the fives and the nines, for some reason, uh, with some of the hardware like hinges, uh, some deck screws or nines, uh, that kind of a thing. It's but it's in between the other. But the most common, if you go buy screws at the store, they'll probably be a six, eight, and ten is the, the most most common sizes. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the magnetic or the little magnetic bits. Okay, part of the modern technology for screwdrivers, you don't necessarily have to have the screwdrivers like this anymore. You can have something like this where you can put in put in a bit, and you can have any size that you want. Uh, this little short one, and then it's got uh, bits stored in the so it's got six screwdrivers in this one little package, uh, and it ratchets even. And so you can have all these different kinds of bits to go in it. You can even have those nut drivers. Like we didn't cover that, but you can have hex, uh, hex head uh, screws uh, and nuts. Um, so they're just wonderful. You can all you can make the screwdriver really long by putting in something like this, and then sticking a bit at the end of that. There. You so now you have this really long screwdriver. You've got to reach into something. Uh, so they're pretty good and you can even stack you can ex stack those extensions and get as long as you need to get uh, or as short as you need to get there's uh, offset wrenches where you can put just that little bitty wrench in here's one that goes in your drill so we can put a screwdriver bit in there put your drill on this and it it turns turns so you can get into a really tight space with that uh, so there's all sorts of attachments and uh, you can come up with about anything. So what, what should you have in your shop? Uh, well, you got to have a big pry bar. <laughs> so you know, this, the set of the Phillips, the set of the, the flat blades. I like using the, uh, the Robertson, the square drive, so I have a set of those that I use. Uh, and then, of course, you want to have the uh, the magnetic and a set of full set of bits that you can use in your drill or drill driver, as they call them, uh, and and have all the the Torx and the Posi drive and all the other options that there are out there. And there are I didn't I've not even scratched the surface of all the different kinds of screws that, especially like I said, for security, uh, they have some. They'll have like a Torx, but it has a pin in the middle, so you've got to have a hollow hole in your driver to be able to use it. It's made so that you can't take things apart without special tools, you know, so people don't take things apart that they're not supposed to. So there's all sorts of those. Way, way too many. Uh, but I think for, uh, for our purposes, we've about covered it. Uh, so what you, what you don't I was joking about the pry bar. Really, buy a pry bar. Not uh, uh, if I got a pry bar handy. Don't use these for pry bars. You you want to keep these. Uh, the, the tips have to be filed. Make sure they're flat, or they're going to slip on you. Uh, when a screwdriver starts getting all wore out, either either you fix it on the grinder or throw it away because it's going to slip on you and uh, hurt yourself or the project. Uh, so you want to buy good quality screwdrivers. Uh, a lot of them will have this darker area. They're hardened tips so you, they don't, uh, don't strip out. Okay, happy screwing around with your tools and uh, we'll talk at you next time.